winding road back to the 1920s at Al Capone's hideaway in St. Charles. Yeah, Al Capone controlled it during the 1920s, but this was the number one outside Chicago. Basically, whatever you needed, it was here, so this was a real hot spot. The restaurant's been in owner Bill Brooks' family for decades, but long ago, the building was actually a speakeasy operated by the big guy himself. There used to be a chicken coop over here, yep. and this is where people would sort of funnel out to, to escape. There was no door here. This was a blocked off chicken coop. And second window, people would, food would go in, deliveries, whatever, but it was a known exit. Bill gave us a tour around the old place, which features thousands of articles and artifacts documenting its history. Now this bathtub here is an actual bathtub. Did they make something in this? Um, this was in our back room where all the booze was uh, made, and this was uh, where you get the old name, Bathtub Gin. Bathtub Gin, baby. Do yeah. you still serve Bathtub Gin or no? We do, out of our liquor company. Oh, okay. our own bathtub gin. <laughs> all right, there but you go. The upper floor is now a performance and dining area, but it used to house a brothel and casino parlor. But the real action happened on the lower level. Back here in the fireside dining room, Capone and his men handmade gin in bathtubs and ran it through the floor to hide from authorities. So what, is it, what does it mean to you that you're sitting right now in a room that used to make liquor back here in bathtubs? <laughs> Well, that's kind of interesting. I didn't realize that. Does that enhance your dining experience? or <laughs> It does enhance it. Right? <laughs> Capone's, it's so much more than just a mobster museum. It's a fine dining steakhouse that has grown a steady stream of regulars through hard work back in the kitchen. We age all of our steaks on premise. We trim all of our steaks. Uh, so we buy, we buy nothing pre-portioned or portion controlled except for some of our USDA and Black Angus items. Your Uncle Mike here cooks every steak over Charcoal. Every, every That's steak. different. You don't see a lot of restaurants using charcoal. No, it's more labor intensive, time intensive, old mesquite. Yeah. It just, it adds such a, a richness, but so gives the steak a lot of depth. Our porterhouse is phenomenal. Our barbecue ribs, we do those on the grill and then finish them off in the oven. And what would any speakeasy be without a stellar liquor selection, right? Capone's offers their own Roaring Twenties beer, which is brewed locally, and they also sport an eye-popping choice of hard liquor. This is yep. an actual glass bottle. Absolutely. Shaped yep. like a Tommy gun. Yep. Is this a pretty popular item? Very, very popular. It is produced in Poland at Pomos Bielstock. The vodka wow. is also from Poland, so. Back away. Is there anything you guys don't do here at That's the restaurant? The brothel is out of service. Oh, it moment. is? <laughs> yes. We also Dang. have a If uh, Big Al was still around today, how do you think he would feel if he walked into your restaurant here? I think he'd probably want a corner table with no one else around, the biggest steak that we have. He'd probably want a cut, too. We'd give him a big cut. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there you have it. Al Capone's Hideaway out here in St. Charles. You can get more information about the place on our blog, cltv.com slash metromix. Now, Jackie, you got to the count of 10 to get your ugly, yellow, no good keister off my show before I pump your guts full of bad cat. One, two, ten. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, that was stupid.